Welcome to Summit's Online Encounter. Our mission is to provide locations where people like you can have life-changing experiences with God. This is one of those locations. We also gather each week as a church in the heart of St. Paul. As disciples of Christ, we are doing our best to be on mission, deliver hope, and champion this city. At any point in your journey, if you want to take the next steps, or you just want to stay in the loop with everything going on at Summit, just grab your phone and simply text the phrase, Be Known, to 651-360-2908. We'll send you a short form. Please complete it so that you can be known in our Summit family. One of the ways to grow your faith is through worship. Worship with our lives in serving and worshiping Jesus with a song. We have pre-recorded some music in our sanctuary to create a place for you to worship with us virtually. So focus in, give way to the space needed, and invest some time in worshiping Jesus.
One of the rhythms that's important to following Jesus is studying scripture. As we study the Bible, we can have hope, find guidance, be corrected, and receive truth into our lives. Let's open God's word and hear this week's message. We've got such an amazing day ahead of us here. Hey, before we get started, just so you know, our guests, Dolphy and Gil, they have a prayer card at the Welcome Center. They are missionaries that are new to Summit. We do not support them monthly yet, but they're doing amazing work, and we want to give them an opportunity to just be here with us today. Uh, We do this because there are more voices in the kingdom of God, and we want to hear from what God's doing in Tanzania, in the bush, uh, and what the Lord is using us all. Uh, The kids are with us today. Pastor Naomi has just given them some context with her team. We wanted to make sure our kids are up here today to experience the heart of God when it comes to global missions. And so there are our kids here, and so if they disrupt you, you'll have to get over that. Um, So Summit Church, get to your feet, show some honor, give God the glory, but give these two honor. God has called them. Dophi and Gil, you are our guests. Please welcome us, lead us. Thank you for being here with us. We love you. You're welcome. God bless you. Well, good morning. We are so happy to be here. I'm Dolphy, and this is... So in America, you... So sometimes people, they're calling Gil and they're calling me Dolphy. So it's not bad. It's okay. So we are uh, missionaries in the bush of Tanzania. And what we do is we plant churches in places where no churches exist. So we go way out into the remote remote areas. And the people group there primarily are the Datog. The Datog are pastoralists. They uh, used to be... Uh, they used to just be nomadic, but because of the the premium on land, they have become they've moved to the most uh, undesirable areas. So these undesirable areas are areas where there's no water, and it's it's extremely remote. So that's one of the reasons that they've remained unreached. Also, another reason is they are animists, so they like to worship their ancestors. And, uh, and they have not known about Jesus. Gil will tell a little bit about his testimony because he actually is a Datog. He was one of the first people that got saved in the first village that I went to. And uh, God has just done an amazing thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you a, a quick video, and then we'll continue to speak.
We praise God. Do you know when, uh, when I went out first uh, 27 years ago, the Lord brought me into a village that was incredible. It had streams flowing through it and beautiful trees and everything. And that was the very first village that I lived in. And this is where Gil ended up getting saved. And later on, years later, after we got married, the Lord moved us to another area called Gitta And in Gitta it was the complete opposite. It was a desert. There was no water, no water for drinking. We would have to drive four hours one direction out of the bush, get to a place where we had to wait in a line, get a hand pump, and pump our water, and then four hours back. And we had to do that three times a week in order to survive. We used salt water to bathe and wash our dishes and our clothes. And, uh, but we knew that God called us to this place. So we would start preaching and we'd try and see people come to the Lord and nothing was working. In fact, what was happening is the village really didn't want us there. And they would come to our house and they say, we've cursed you, you're going to die, you need to leave. And every day, this is what they would do. We've cursed you, you're going to die, you need to leave. So life was hard. And everything that could go wrong went wrong. This is early in our marriage. We were trying to have babies. Unfortunately, I end up, ended up miscarrying multiple times. And it was just one hard thing after another. And there's still no believers yet. And so one day, as Gil and I are walking, and we would walk around the village and we would pray over the village, I just sat down. And I started to cry. And Gil's like, what's going on? And I said, this has been the hardest time in my life. I know God called us, but maybe he has closed the door in this area. And I thank the Lord for, for moving through Gil with the power of the Holy Spirit. Because he said, Dolphy, never will the Lord open a door and then shut it before his purpose has been fulfilled. And I, in that rung truth in my, it spoke truth in my heart, and I realized it. And we began to think we were doing ministry wrong. What we needed to do is we needed to focus on prayer. And when you start praying, you see miracles happen. And so we started going, our life started wrapping around prayer. What you just saw in there on that video is by God's grace and the power of prayer, not by anything Gil and I are capable of, there are now 49 church plants where there were zero. And then in addition to that, the Lord showed us the opportunity of building Christian schools in these, in these remote areas and raising up these children in the ways of the Lord. And, you know, we even have kids now going into Bible school now that they're already growing up. And so we just praise God for that. And we know that everything, everything is by the power of prayer. And I see you guys are having prayer next week. And that's an awesome praise to God, because I tell you what, we can move mountains by the power of prayer in the name of Jesus. You know, the Bible tells us in John chapter 14, verse uh, 13, he says, Ask of me anything, and it'll be given to you. Ask of me anything in my name, and it'll be done, so that the Son bring glory to the Father. If you ask of me anything in my name, it will be done. So think about that, church. This is not as we ask in selfishness or anything like that, but it's asking in, in concert with God's will. And when we ask for this area, St. Paul, It'll be done so that the Son bring glory to the Father. When we ask that people get saved in Tanzania, it is done so that the Son bring glory to the Father. Sophie, you're doing good. <laughs> so we have a lot to, to tell you guys about what God is doing. A lot. So and I'm glad after service we go down to share uh, uh, more. Before we go far, I just want to share what God is doing in my life. And I'm learning English because some people, they can say, what do you speak about? You know, English is a very tough language to learn. So my, uh, my English, maybe sometimes it's not good, but, you know, I believe the Holy Spirit can tell you what, they, what, 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 they, what I'm speaking about. <laughs> so before I accept Christ, I was 
actually my mom and my dad and people in the village, they not know Christ. So they not know anything about Jesus. So after, before I accepted Christ, uh, I was an alcoholic. And it's so bad. My life is so bad. I drink alcohol. I not, I'm not doing anything, so I just go, you know, sitting around and, you know, just drink and sleep outside, and sometimes I'm falling down. It's bad. My life is so bad. And uh, God, he loves us so much. Dolphy and the team, actually Pacific Dolphy, she's from Wisconsin, Kenosha. And I believe their connection between that time Satan want to kill me God says, no. So right now, I can send somebody from Kenosha, Wisconsin, coming to the Tanzania in the, in the village of, of Old Piro area. So Dolphy and the team, they're coming planting a church in, in, in Old Piro area. I don't know anything about God. You know, the place is so remote. It's no road. It's no, it's no uh, uh, hospital. It's no TV. It's no Facebook. It's no YouTube. So you, nothing you can find on, 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 on online. It's no line. And the phone we have is a stupid phone. So sometimes it's windy. It's not working. <laughs> so they're coming planting a church in Olipiro and... Uh, Dolphy and the team, they bring somebody, they talk to somebody, and they say, you know, can you come in the village and showing the Jesus film? So that pastor coming in the village and showing the Jesus film. Bef because this is the first time. So everybody, they're just exciting. What is happening today? Because it's noisy, you know, they're putting a choir. So I'm starting walking to the, to the area to find out what is going on. The moment I'm starting walking, I feel different. I feel like a pressure a little bit. I don't feel, it looks like I'm confusing. I don't know, but I, I understand something is not correct. And I'm thinking, what has happened? So I just walk, so it's coming and gone. So I just walk, and so the time I close the area, people, they're sitting down, they're watching, they're watching the movie of the Jesus, Jesus film. And I'm sitting down and I see Jesus touching eyes of people and miracles happening. Their voice coming back and says, your problem today is gone. And I don't understand what is, you know, I don't understand, but I feel the pressure. I feel something going on. So pastor, he says, this is the pastor, he says, he says, if you believe, and this is the foundation of problem for everything. If you believe Jesus we can pray for you and your problem, maybe, because it's not know what is I'm struggle about. But he's telling people, if you believe Jesus, if you have a sickness, if you have anything, if you believe, we can pray for you and we, you can see what God is doing. I'm ready to believe long something can happen in my life because I'm ready a uh, listening voice in my mind is what is going on. And the one I love for God Jesus is the boss. He continues to speak to me before even I, I don't know what is going on. He's speaking. He's, he's prepared my mind and my focus to, to know this is the place I can receive healing. He opening and he says, come on. If you want to accept the Christ, if you want anything, just come. So I run into the pastor and I say, pastor, I have one issue. I see I'm going to die. And he said, what has happened? And I said, I drink alcohol for a long time ago. My mom, my dad, they're giving witch doctors cows, they're giving goats, they're giving chicken, they're giving, they're giving money, they're giving corn, they're giving... You know what is the witch doctor they're doing? Nothing. Nothing. And what my boss is doing, Jesus, he healed me, he take my problem for, for, for free. Jesus is not asking me that time, I need a chicken, I need a goat, I need a cows, I need a donkey, nothing. He says, if you believe, I can do it. Because I'm my, I, I am your boss and I love you so much. The one, only one God he wants is to believe. If you believe, he's the boss. He can do anything he wants. The issue sometimes, we believe a little bit. And we, we uh, maybe, if you're already putting something, maybe, you don't sure. 
But that time I remember, I don't have a, maybe I believe this is going to happen. And I know what is some struggle about. You know, the moment you struggle and you know this is the issue and you believe, can happen. God take my problem. I receive healing that night. Long story and short, Adolfo, she's in the uh, village and the team. And I'm glad because this is a weekend missions. And it's a lot of people, not just America, but even in Tanzania. Satan is putting a mind of a lot of people to not believe missions because Jesus is coming to do missions in this world. This is why we are here this morning. Because he's a mission. He's coming to do mission. He's giving his life to the people. He died on the cross for each person. Think about this. I'm going fast a little bit because I don't know why in America time is going fast. I, I, the time is running so fast. So if I'm going fast, it's because I have a lot of things to, do, to, to say. So listen, if, not, if the church does not go behind the door and says, Dorothy, we believe God is calling you. We can support you. I tell you, I'm not here this morning. I died for a long time ago. But I am here because one church, like this church, some people, they say, Dorothy, we believe God is calling you. We can send you. This is why I'm here. I'm here because some people, they're sending missionaries. And not just this, in Africa, you guys, you're sending missionaries to Africa. This is so many churches in, 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 in Africa. Because some people, they're sending missionaries. And this is the area right now. Satan makes sure we're not giving for missions. We're not reading Bible. We're not praying. These three, Satan knows if we're putting our focus and we do it, we win. Satan is very smart. And actually, sometimes in the U.S., there's a lot of people they not understand about Satan. It's a lot of people. They're thinking, it's a lot of people, actually, people, they're not believe it. But in the bush, we know because we work in a place that's so remote. It's a lot of witch doctors. I grow up in the bush. Before I accept Christ, I know my mom and my dad, what are they doing? Where did they take me? What did they talk about witch doctors? So we understand the spiritual of the darkness. But this nation, because God is blessing so much, it's a lot of people, sometimes, they play with, uh, with, 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 with the movies of, 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 of uh, witchcraft. I tell you, English is so bad. I must not find out what this means. <laughs> Let's go to Hebrews chapter 6. First, chapter 11, sorry. Chapter 11, verse 6. <laughs> Duffy, he can you read, honey, please? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. This is the foundation. Faith is the foundation for Christianity, for each person. Go ahead, honey. Continue, okay. continue. <laughs> and without faith, it's impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists, and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. After I accept Christ and I see God is ready doing a miracle, I'm ready to uh, uh, stop drinking alcohol, I say, God, I want to preach because this is a miracle. I want to preach, but remember, I born in the bush. I don't know when I born, like these children here. It's so amazing in the U.S., you ask a child like this, where you born? And still they know the date they're born and they know months and they know birthday. In the bush, we don't have a birthday. We born like a baby's cows. You don't know the date. You don't know when. We don't have a birthday. We don't have a cake. It's no chocolate. Life is so tough. <laughs> I come back in the U.S. and we go the first time. And we're sitting at the restaurant. And I see balloons jumping up, balloons. balloons. And I said, Dorothy, this is a place for eat. What is going on? And she says, somebody have a birthday. And I say, what does it mean a birthday? And he says, um, what? Because we don't have. So, Dolphy and I in the bush, we're helping people, but it's so amazing to see what God is doing. 
even because I born in the bush, I don't go to school, so I, I say, God, I want to read. So for one month, I pray for one month, not just, but that one specific I put in my mind and, and pray, God helping me to read. Because I see pastors preaching in the church, I need to read. One month, God opening my eyes, I, I, I reading Bible. But before, God is starting even before, because after I prayed, I feel like, okay, take your goat, go selling at the market. So market is about three hours, one direction and three hours, come back. So I feel like, okay, I want to go and just selling my goat and buy my Bible and come back. So I take my goat, buy my Bible, come back. I'm so excited. So I don't have in my mind, why are you selling your goat and you cannot read? Are you stupid a little bit? Why are you doing? <laughs> so I don't have this question because, you know, it's so amazing. God, if God wants you to do something, you don't have anything in your mind. It's very strong because he's the boss. He's very strong con uh, co communication. And, 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 and it looks like if you have a phone, it's connected to the tower. So your mind is already connected, and you cannot have anything because God, he wants you to specific to focus for the one he wants you to do it. I buy my Bible, come back. And sometimes I pray and I open like this. I say, God is just helping me. I want to read. I want to pray. I want to read. I want to preach. I feel it. One day after one month, God opening my eyes. I'm reading Bible. And uh, so I can read, but I cannot write. So just to explain that, he would hold the Bible, and he would ask the Lord to help him to read. He didn't go to school. And Sometimes one day I feel he like opened it. And he was able to read it and understand it. Sometimes I feel like I want to go in the middle of trees and I open my Bible. In the middle of trees, no people. So I do like pastor is doing in the church. So I do like this and, you know, I look my Bible. <laughs> God opening my eyes, reading Bible. And After he, me, and three he did guys. that to three other guys where they all are pastors and missionaries now. So I have to meet three guys. Before we accept Christ, we struggle a lot. People, they're beating us. People, they're beating us. People, they say, don't go to church because they're not they understand. In the middle of prayer, because we don't know any, anything we can do, we prayed. We go to church. we asking a pastor how we can do. What we can do because our, my, even my mom and my dad and some friends in the village, in, in the village, if you're sick, they take you, they carry, what did they call the dog? They, they do a stretcher walk. run up the mountain. So the, the hospital was six hour walk up the mountains. And so you need about 45 or 50 people to do a stretcher run because it's that far and they have to keep trading places. And so they said, hey, if you go to church, because this is not something we understand, we have ostracized you. So you have a choice. You can either be a datog or you go to church. If you go to church, you're not allowed to. We won't help you if you're sick. If there's a cry for help, like maybe your cows got stolen, we are not going to help you. And so in every case, they were not going to help. But we told them, we said, because you want to show the love of Christ in every circumstance, if there's a cry for help, you will help. At the meeting about 300 people, maybe four, they're doing hands like this, and they say, okay, because they see we, we're talking about we, we, we cannot stop. So they're doing hands like this, and they say, okay, this hand have a milk and oil. So this is the life of the, the talk. This one have a blood. So choose one. So if you choose this one for milk and oil, you choose the life of, of the datog. So you stop, go to church, you can go to the datog and living like the datog they're doing. But if you choose the one for blood, it means you choose to die. We're already learning about the blood of Jesus. I say I'm choosing one for the blood. My mom and some ladies, they're just running and say, woo, 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 woo. So it means I'm choosing blood and I'm ready to die. They're just running, they come back. We have a meeting, and some guys, we just, and, and you know, we just, after you, you say, you pick the blood, go that way. If you pick the one for the datog, go that way. You go stay with the datog, and we go to the church, and we're asking pastor, we say, so what we can do? 
First, it says, pray. Pray and fasting. We go to church, we pray. And I tell you, the moment we struggle, we don't feel anything even too hungry. If we struggle, no hungry, no want to drink water. So our mind is that, that problem. We see that problem is so, it's, 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 it's amazing to see what is doing Satan in the bush. We cry to God. God bring a lion on the mountain that night coming down. The next day, kill the cow. It's a Sunday. We go to church. We don't know anything, but it's a cry for help. So cry for help. It looks like a 911. So 911, you're not doing for joking. So if you lie and coming or maybe somebody sick, you do like this. We go to the village and uh, we, go, we, we go to the church and come back. I took a spear. I ran in that area. So with a cry for help, it's mandatory for every single person to run with whatever weapon they have towards the cry for help and to keep, keep doing it so that others could hear it. So God allowing me to kill the dead lion. Kill the dead lion and that lion bring unity to the village and to the church. God is making this because it's not... It's not because I'm smart, but God allowing that one happening because it's a, it's a unity. Yeah. And I tell you, we go down and we can finish because I'm cutting short because I want people to understand what God is doing. We're talking about Tanzania. So now I want to shift a little bit in America. What do we see in America if we come back, Dolphy and I, we come back in the U.S., we go back to Africa, we see children accept Christ, we see women, we see boys, we see everybody accept Christ in the bush. But the first time, because we're moving in the bush and we're not focused for prayer, nothing happened. And it's not because God does not have a power. It's because we not spend enough time with God for us. We're just running around. We do a lot of things. We're using our mind. The moment we see anything is not happening, and we say, nope, we want to come knees to put knees down. We say, this is our life. We need to, we need to put our knees down. You see what is, you know what is doing, what is happening? The first Christian is the wife of witch doctor. She accepted Christ. We see war is coming. The war is coming. We see schools. We see people coming to know Christ. It's so amazing. A lot of people, we're coming to the U.S. and they say, oh, Gil, why you we don't see miracles in the U.S.? Because you're born in the middle of miracle. This is why. For us, if war is coming, it's a miracle. Somebody accept Christ, is a miracle. Somebody is heal, God is healing somebody for sickness, is a miracle. School, to building a school in the village, is a miracle. To have food, is a miracle. To have water, to have a hospital, is a miracle. So here, I can't believe the timing is gone. So I want to, I want, I want, it's so amazing. I can't believe who, who's, who's, who's touching that button. <laughs> it's, a look, it's a look like somebody touching button and time is go fast. <laughs> what do we see in the U.S.? Actually, we planting one church. People, they walk for two days, come to church. Two days. They're walking yesterday, they're coming to church. They're walking yesterday and sleep somewhere. And this morning, like this morning, come to church. They are not have water. They're, they're walking, come to church. And church, if we finish about 3, 3.30 in Tanzania, it's all year. So we're rushing. We're starting 9 to 3.30. So these people, they come to church. They not have water, they not have a bicycle, they not have a motorcycle. The road is so bad, even if you have a car and you're driving, it looks like this in the car. <laughs> they come to church, they're not rushing, they're not what time, what is time. We spend the time, we're worshiping God, we know it's Sunday, no pressure, we relax. What has happened here, right now, in the, in the church, in the U.S.? The road is very nice. 
People they have a car, people they have a motorcycle, people they have a bicycle, people they have a water, people they have a food. You can eat cheeseburger, you can eat pizza, you can eat eggs and steak, you can eat anything. But people they're hiding in the house. You can shower, you can shower and you walk around in the shower like this. <laughs> people, people they come to church. They're not shower in the church. We don't have water. They not have water. To, I can't believe it. Look, we have water here. <laughs> Nobody worried in the bush for a shower. Look, we have a coffee everywhere. You go to the bathroom, toilet paper is everywhere. <laughs> Over there, we're using a poop of donkey, dry poop of donkey, dry poop of cows. This is toilet paper. People, they are not coming to church, even right now. This is, the, this is the direction the church in America is moving because people, they are living a life. God is blessing this nation for long. God is protecting this nation. God is giving America good doctors, giving good doctors, giving good teachers, and giving good food. You go to restaurant, you go to restaurant, and God give you freedom. You go to restaurant, you have a menu like this Bible. God says, choose anything you want to eat. You just read it. I don't know what I can eat. Uh, uh, I don't know. What is happening in Tanzania? We don't have a choice. Anything coming on the table, we eat. We don't have a menu. We don't have a menu. People, people, people. We speak one, one, one church in Milwaukee. And the pastor says, the one I struggle in, in this church, if people, if they are not find a place to park the car, they're not coming to the church. They cancel for parking. Remember, I say we're planting a church. People, they work for two days. Two days. You have a car. You have a house. If it's cold, Minnesota here, I, I know it's snowing. I've been in Minnesota one time, and if it's snowing, you press pattern and making a house warm. If it's hot, you press button, you ma you're making the house cold. You go shower, you walk around, it's to look like, a, it's to look like a, you are in the middle of a store, you're shopping. The first time Madafi, we coming in the U.S., she go, to, she, she go to shower. I don't understand about hot water, you know. And she shower and uh, I want to open the door. The moment I opening the door, it's a smoke outside. It's a look, it's a look like a she. It's a look like a she burned grass. <laughs> and she walk out. She passing me. She's so hot. And I said, "Dolphy, are you okay?" And she said, "Yeah, I love the water in the U.S." For me, because I'm born in the bush, I grow up in the bush. We don't shower. I put a little bit. Warm, a little bit warm water. And outside, this below zero in Wisconsin. You know Wisconsin and Minnesota must look the same. It's crazy area if it's snowing. <laughs> My friend from America, God protected this nation for long. You see these children? You see these children? These children parents. God is ready to give you a Power. You have a power in your hands. You need to spend the time for pray for this nation. Putting on the list, America. God, we pray for this nation. God, protect our nation. God, protect our jobs. Protect our... God, continue to protect this nation. You guys, I tell you, you have a good life. We went to Duffy, her sister house one day, and she's not home. And, 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 and she's calling, and she says, hey, where are you? And she says, I take my, my, I take my dog to cut hair. <laughs> and I said, Dolphy, what? Even, even, even dog, they're cutting hair? And she says, yeah, she go cutting her, her dog hair. And I said, this is amazing. Even dogs, they have a good life in America. <laughs> Nobody worried about how long dog your hair you have. Nobody. This is my point. This is weekend missions. What is our responsibility before we die and go to heaven? What is our responsibility? 
Each person, I just ask each person this morning, your house, right now, if you go at your house, around your house, how many people, how many people, they're close to you, how many people neighborhood at your house, how many? Who can tell him about Jesus? Who? God is putting you specific in their area because he wants to make you like light in their area. You come to church, God is ready, is ready blessing you or maybe not. And I say this because there's a lot of people, sometimes Satan is coming in their mind and they say, don't give money. Do you know what is doing money in the church? You don't understand. Stop giving. So you can't say you're not giving. Like this morning, pastor says, we have a debt. Dead. Dead Death in the church. Each person in the church, they want to see this is our responsibility. We, know, we want to take this. We don't want Sunday to talk about that. We want to work. If you have your friend, it's a business, it's a doctor, it's a what? You're taking a, a, a card. You say, I want you helping me. We have this. We want to take this and we want to focus on our people in this area. It's a lot of people, they're living in the darkness. A lot of women, a lot of children, people, they're hurting. I'm not speaking about Tanzania, and I'm not making you exciting and giving us because we're missionaries. No, I just want Pacific in this area. What do you have? What is your planning in this area? What do you want to do for people? How people they can see Jesus to you? Because I believe we are the bridge. Let's all stand. Let's just stand up. And if you want to. If you want to, if you want to God to touch even right now to you, I just want to pray. I just want to pray. Just come, come, come here. We just want to pray. Why are we not giving for missions? What is stopping us? God, he loves us so much. He died on the cross. Our lives is messed up. Just come in. Don't we still we can share what God is doing even our marriage, Dorothy and I. To put together, Dorothy and I, to put together like right now. It looks like you're putting a donkey and a cow together, but God is working in our lives. God is helping us a lot. Hmm? God is making communication. It's a lot of even in the church. People did divorce. People did. So it's a lot of chaos in the church. It's some place. People, they can running outside and coming in the church. The reason is because we don't spend the time with this word, we don't pray enough, we don't fasting, and we open the door and Satan coming in, people they divorce, people they do. You look in the church and you say, what is going on? He's the boss. Let's raise in your hands. We need to pray. Thank you, Jesus. God, we believe you. God, this morning, we, we, we say, God, Jesus, you are the boss in our lives. God, I pray this morning for this church. It's a lot of people even outside. They just walk this morning. They just so struggle for alcoholic, for pornography, for a lot of stuff. Their lives is so bad. God, I pray in the name of power of Jesus. God, I pray just take in mind of a lot of people the confusing of this world. People, they just so upset, spiritual, angry. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, just remove. God, we're asking you because we know you love us so much. God, if it's not you, I'm not here this morning. I died for a long time ago. But God, you changed my life. God, I pray for United States of America. I pray for women. I pray for boys and girls and men. I remember in Tanzania, one church. We need to buy property for the church. People do not have anything, but they have a chicken. I remember, I remember the moment we pray. We see a lot of people coming to buy eggs. They buy eggs everywhere. The end of the week, we buy property for the church. And right now, we're talking about death in the church. We're talking about missions. Some people, they're not ready yet. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, 
Show these people you love so much. Show these people, oh God, what they can do for missions. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, and I repent because we are people. We make mistakes. Sometimes we don't understand. God, open our mind and our hearts to see you, Jesus, in this area, to helping women, to helping children, to helping boys and girls in the schools, in the community, in the name of Jesus. I pray for Minnesota. I pray for U.S. I pray for each area. I pray for government. I pray for military. I pray for police. God bring peace. God bring unity in the United States of America. In the name of Jesus, Satan, in the name of Jesus, I command you this morning, live in the name of Jesus. Satan, live in the United States, in the doctor's life, in the military, in the name of Jesus. God, God, Minnesota, you're putting everywhere water. It's a lot of water everywhere. United States of America, I've been in Wisconsin. You're putting a lot of corn, and people did not see it. I see miracle. I see miracle left and right. You're putting corn. You're putting potato. You're putting water. You're putting everything. God, in the name of Jesus, blessing this church. Thank you so much for Pastor Aaron. Thank you so much for leaders giving a vision, giving a people that can work in the name of Jesus. Jesus! Robo Kasi Kanda Rabakoria. God, I pray, help us for sickness. God, I pray, in the name of Jesus, move spirit of sickness, spirit of issues, of marriages. Even those people this morning, they have an issue for marriage. God, I pray, in the name of Jesus, showing you are the boss, showing Jesus. Showing this man and his wife right now the direction they want to do is not a good idea. In the name of Jesus, the moment we're running to you, God, I believe it. You love us so much. The problem, God, we are people. We're walking around. We're not doing anything. God, we thank you so much. We love you, God, and help us. Continue blessing this nation. Thank you so much, God. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Dolphy Gill. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being so faithful. Thank you so much. Church, we were blessed to have them here. I love that, you know, Gill, he says, Jesus is the boss. Don't forget it. I'm not the boss. This isn't my church, this is our church, and Christ is the head of this church. We're on this together. Uh, so thank you for being with us. I look forward to the time in our basement and our fellowship hall that we can ask those questions and hear more of what God's doing with you and through you all the way in Tanzania. And in, in typical Tanzanian cuisine, we're selling egg rolls. You don't know they're authentically from Tanzania, but they are for this story. If you pre-ordered your egg rolls or you want to come down there and just spend some time this afternoon, make sure that you do that. All of those proceeds are going to go to Speed the Light, our student wing of our missions here at church. Uh, their prayer cards and Diane's information, as well as all of our other missionaries, are on the actual missions table, uh, the, the wall right outside here. We will see you next week as I dive into dealing with difficult people uh, yourself. How do you deal with difficult people when you look in the mirror and you're the difficult person? Uh, so let's, let's navigate that and see what the Lord does in our own hearts in the soundtrack of our minds. God bless you, church. We'll see you in the basement. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a light in St. Paul. Have a great week. We'll see you soon. To help you apply the truth found in scripture, we always like to ask three questions. What did you learn about God? What did you learn about yourself? And how are you going to apply what the Holy Spirit is speaking through scripture to your life? We hope that these questions help bring clarity for you. Thank you for being a part of our online encounter. Join us in person sometime as we gather as a church on Summit Avenue, or join us here virtually again next week.
Let me just say, our city of St. Paul is absolutely amazing. I encourage you to check out all the history it has to offer. And you need to know Summit Church, this church has been a part of that history with so many amazing churches in our city. But speaking specifically about the people of Summit, well, we've been gathering here since 1932. And my hope is that this would be a rich history. It would be our forward legacy. History is a thing of the past, but legacy, it makes way you know, for the future. So the question I have for us is where are we going? Uh, that is a good question. Our vision is simple. It's really to see all of people and beyond living as disciples of Christ, people full of hope, uh, fully known, actively loving one another, living a spirit-led life. Our mission, it's also simple as well, to provide rhythm, location, opportunity for you to have a life-changing experience with God. Uh, you know, we all journey in our diversity to do these three things, become disciples of Jesus, deliver hope, and to champion our city. That's where we're going and that's what we're doing. So maybe a question for you is where are you going? You know, what are your next steps? I would encourage you to do this. Join one of our monthly expeditions. The expedition is a simple experience where you can find out more about who you are in Christ, who Summit Church is, what we do around here, and how you can maybe even, you know, play a part. It's less than two hours of your time uh, for the whole month. We also feed you amazing food and even provide child care. So the question is, where are you going? Hopefully to the expedition is my thought. We're all on a journey following Jesus, maybe together. We just might not be us without you. We'll see you at the summit.